I've got two pieces of wood here that viewer Tim from California sent me and I have them marked 921 so I've had them for a while. This is a piece of guava. Never seen guava and I've never turned guava. This uh, looks very aged. It has a crack in it and I'm looking forward to turning something on this. It has a big hole in there. I haven't quite decided what I want to do with it. This is ornamental chestnut. They both came in the same package, so this is 921 as well. I cut this piece here off. I want to see what it looks like, and then I'll think about what to do with that one. But I'm going to do an end grain turning out of this. It's got some interesting looking colors in there, and I don't know how much of it's going to stay, but it's just going to be a simple little end grain turning. So I already put a hole in there for a worm screw. I'll get it mounted up in the chuck, and we'll see what we can make out of this. All right, this piece is about five and a half by five. I'll go ahead and use the tailstock for a while. Okay, I'll start with a 5 8 spool gouge. And we'll see what kind of RPM we can get. At 850. Okay, let's have a look at what this looks like on the inside. I'm going to flatten the bottom see where we're at because that is on an angle. I think I will go with the recess on this. I'm kind of thinking about once I flip it to get the tenon off and get it cleaned up. Being that this is end grain, I'd rather get it cleaned up now. I'm going to use this 40-40 grind that I have because it's supposed to cut through end grain better and I think it actually does. And I don't get to use it that much, so it's a good place for it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and get a recess in here and get that end sanded up and flip it around and I'll sand this once it's flipped around.
Okay, I've got a, a little dovetail shape in here. Okay, I have it flipped around. I've got quite a bit to take off to flatten the top. And the more I'm looking at this, I actually am not liking it all that much. My initial thought was to round it over like that. It's probably what I'm going to do, but let's get this flat, see what it looks like, and we'll go from there. Yeah, like that. Okay. It looks more finished like this. It'd be different if there was some bark on there. Okay, I'm going to set up and drill a hole in there. I'm still trying to design this while I'm doing it. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and drill this out. Alright, I've got the lathe in reverse. I think I can just get a better angle doing it this way. If you do any turning in reverse, there's a set screw on the back of your chuck that'll keep it from unscrewing. So make sure you do that. Eight hundred RPM. When hollowing the inside of an end grain, you want to come from the bottom, come back up as you go out to take some material away. If you go in, you're pushing against the fibers. Alright, that's going to take a while and I'll uh, just keep working at it and come right back and let you know what we're doing. I went ahead and drilled the hole to within 3 eighths of the bottom and I'm not going to be able to get this tool rest in there because this will all hit before I get deep enough. So recently I purchased this tool rest, it's made by Nova. And I purchased this so I could show how to make a ring cutting jig using this so that everybody could make a nice metal one by using this system. This will reach in there. It may not reach everything but I'll show you what else I have for an option. And that would be this one which is 
a one inch bar welded on top of another one and that will definitely reach in there. Let's start with this one, see what we can get away, what material we can get away, and and we'll switch if we need to. Okay, I'm going to still be turning in reverse, and I'm going to use my carbide tool on this. And I'm going to move the light over so I can see. So this tool rest is working quite well. Alright, I think we got it pretty close. It's about 5 sixteenths walls. I think that's plenty good. It's a little tore out, but I think the negative break scraper will clean it up enough where I can get it sanded. I'm switching back, turning the lathe forward because this tool is currently grounded, cut on this side. Okay, that's working okay. It's, uh, it's sandable now, so I think I'll get set up and we'll get the inside sanded. All right, I'm ready to do some sanding. And I, I got these walls down to around 5 sixteenths, maybe 3 eighths in places. I'll start with 80 grit and I'll use my extended mandrel here to do that. Sand through 400. I'll do the outside starting with 80 grit and going to 400, but I'll switch to the shorter mandrel. I'll be sanding with the lathe going forward for the inside. I'll do it in reverse for the outside at around 380 to 400 RPM. Okay, it is time for maybe everyone's favorite part of wood turning. That's putting a finish on the piece. And I've got to admit I'm a little confused on this one because I'm not sure what colors those are. I am slightly colorblind when it comes to different shades of colors. So I went in and asked what color this was and this apparently is a gray and that's a beige. I suppose I see gray in there but while turning it I was seeing brown. Let's see what happens when we get some shellac based sanding sealer on it. That looks brown to me. It looks interesting. No doubt about that. I like it whatever color it is. Alright, that's what it's going to look like. Let me know if you think it's pretty. It's 
uh, it's pretty different. I like this area right here a lot. Okay, that is soaking it up. This is probably one of maybe three coats I'll put on. And I'm probably not going to show you the inside because I can barely see in there. And if I put my hand in there to get the finish on it, you're not going to see anything. So, a couple more coats of the Zinsser Seal Coat, and then I'll put some Zinsser Shellac on it. And then I'll be back and we'll discuss maybe one more step. I put three coats of the Zinsser Seal Coat on, two coats of the Zinsser Shellac. I went over it with this fine Scotch Brite, and then I went over it with this white pad, which is a little bit finer. So now I'll use the Axe Abrasive Paste and polish, and that will be the last thing that I do to it. It already has a nice smooth finish, but this will just enhance it a little bit, and I like to do that. Yeah, I'll do this in reverse. So I have a video on how I use the abrasive paste and polish and I'll put a link in the description in case you're interested in how I do each one of those steps. I'm now putting on the polish restoring paste and once that's on and buffed out you'll really see a big difference. Okay, all done. Let me get this off the lathe and get some finish on the bottom and I'll be back and I'll show you what we have. Well here it is and I'm calling it a small little vase made out of ornamental chestnut. And I think it turned out pretty nice. Finished five inches tall, it's four and a quarter inches in diameter, and the walls are one quarter of an inch. The base is three and an eighth inch, and after finishing it, I flipped it over and was able to grab it in my chuck, and I turned the recess away and gave it a little more decoration. And look at the inside, I think it's actually got some spalting in there. So uh, interesting colors in this piece. I finished it with three coats of Zinsser Seal Coat, two coats of the Zinsser Shellac, and I then went over it with the Axe Abrasive Paste and Polish. It turned out very smooth. And it really helped show off those colors. This, I really like that. That's pretty interesting. And then over here is where you can see some nice chatoyants. It was a fun little turning. It was quick and easy to do, and it was just what I needed. Thank you, Tim, for sending me this beautiful piece of ornamental chestnut, and I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment. I enjoy reading them all, and I do my best to answer them all. If you could share the video around, that would really be great. If you're not subscribed, please consider doing so, and many thanks to all of my current subscribers. I enjoy all types of wood turning. Let me know your favorite. Thanks again, and until the next time, see you later.